Hey guys, Kim here. I just wanted to do a quick video for any of you startup jewelry designers ready to have your first collection developed with your supplier. So this was kind of a last minute topic that I thought of just because I'm currently working with a few new clients right now. And you know, a couple of them, they've only just started their jewelry business. Um, they're in the middle of designing their website, getting quotes from packaging companies, etc. And after finalizing the quotations of their jewelry designs with me, they want to go ahead and place an order as soon as possible. That's all fine. But sometimes I found that by getting loads and loads of designs with lots of different variations produced, especially when you're just starting your jewelry business or brand, it might be better to just scale it back a little bit um, in the beginning and not develop too many pieces or variations too soon. Stay watching and I'll explain more. If it's your first time here, hey, I'm Kim, owner of Tide Design Distributors, and we're a third generation family business with our manufacturing plant based in Thailand, producing silver and gold jewelry exclusively for designers. It's going to be a short video. So when you have time, just check out my intro video, which tells you more about me and the purpose of this channel. If you guys have any questions you'd like me to discuss, just drop it down in the comment section below. And please don't forget to like, subscribe for all my latest videos on jewelry manufacturing. So this is through my observation with working with lots of various designers and seeing how the growth of their brand have evolved over the years. But I've noticed through speaking with them, seeing their websites, and obviously by them placing repeated and regular orders, that a lot of their early success comes from them offering just a handful of selected jewelry pieces that they've chosen to sell. You know, in the past, when we have produced the very first range of jewelry pieces for some customers, you know, sometimes those design pieces don't really fit or look part of the same collection range, if that makes sense. So, for example, if I produce, say, a rose pendant, round ball stud earrings, heart drop earrings, these designs aren't part of the same collection, but they're more like various design styles that a jewelry designer might think will sell uh, because even though they're beautifully detailed and seem like a timeless pieces, they're just sort of thrown in without any feel that it's part of a collection, as opposed to keeping that rose theme, but having the matching small stud earring and then maybe a slightly larger rose as the drop earrings. Those would look better when they're photographed together, but there's also a concept going on and a story behind that. And maybe they call it, you know, the rose theme. I've also had customers where they have sometimes gone slightly overboard with extending that themed collection by having many variations as possible. And maybe that's the way you want to go. Your design concept may just be about one particular style of jewelry and there's a strong story to tell behind it. And you know, I can see that working with designers who work with certain gemstones where you might need to have several different colors of stones, each symbolizing a different meaning, and you'd want that stone in the same jewelry design. I get that. But from working with designers who have, for example, um, if we keep to this rose theme, they extend the range to have, say, lots of different rose sizes in all the various categories of your pendants, your earrings, bracelets, rings, and it's combined with options of having them in various colors, such as silver, rose gold, and yellow gold plating, as well as allowing the options of having, let's say, a small white diamond or a semi-precious stone set in the middle of the rose. It becomes almost too overwhelming for the customer. I'm giving you this example because I've done this for customers before where, you know, they overextend their collection and the feedback I get from them is that they've just ordered too much stock for all these different design variations. And some of them are stuck with this inventory stock that they find hard to shift out and sell. It's a little bit like if I go into a shop and I don't know about you, but say I want to buy a bag and there's so many different variations of the same bag that I end up just being totally undecided and walk out the store with nothing. Or you might just buy several bags and return the ones that you don't want. My point is, keep the options more limited than not. You want your customer to feel and recognize that you've chosen these certain designs for a reason, such as there's something special about each of them, which is why you haven't offered such a huge range or selection. I'm learning through my jewelry designers that their customers love a story behind their jewelry. So if you're just starting off, keep the range simple. You don't want to be overstocked with jewelry items you've ordered without testing the waters first. One of the company policies that I have in my company is, you know, I don't accept return goods just because they haven't been able to sell. That's a pretty standard policy, but I have occasionally been asked this from customers and sometimes I might try to help them out, for example. So I'll take back some of the silver pieces they ordered and plate them in, say, yellow gold because they found that more of the yellow gold pieces have sold than any other color. So 
At least that helps eliminate the stock of the silver version items. And quite a few times I've had my customers place orders for items that they think would be a good seller because they might have a personal attachment to that design. But you know what, your customers might not feel the same way. So it's important to test the waters and maybe have a three or six month review to see what items are your best sellers and the ones that aren't, you might just consider to discontinue them. And from knowing what the best sellers are, your brand can naturally evolve over time. I've seen my customers develop an awareness of what their niche is, what their customers' tastes are, and having an idea of what their customers expect based on what's been selling well will help guide you in designing your next jewelry collection. So whether that be in your spring, summer or autumn, winter range. So guys, I just wanted to share that little bit of information with you, especially if you are brand new to the jewelry trade. And it's not like I don't want to accept orders of all these different jewelry variations or anything like that. I mean, it's good business for me, but there's also a personal element where I also wanna see my customers grow and become successful. So this is just something that I've observed where if you keep your designs more to a minimum, then it's more attractive to the end customer and it's going to give you a good starting point to see how your brand grows and what you find are your customer's favorite pieces. Have samples made of different variations, that's totally fine, but when it comes to placing those large orders, be picky in the end selection. So that's my take on it, guys, um, and what I've learned with working with my customers. I hope that was helpful to you and I will see you in my next video. Take care, bye.